Um, hello, everyone, and good afternoon and evening to you. Uh, welcome to APC webinar series. Uh, I'm Sean Ree, uh, APC Sports Manager. Um, thank you for joining today's webinar from um, MPCs and national sports federations, local organizing committees, and schools and academy. Hope everyone is well and safe uh, wherever you are now. Uh, for today, we are happy to have Mr. John Shear, uh, Badminton World Federation Senior Development Manager, who will provide you with an overview of para badminton and support programs, and also some key focus areas of the um, Badminton World Federation. Um, thank you again, John, for accepting our um, invitation and supporting our reason. Before the session begin, please uh, make sure everyone uh, uh, mute your microphone during the session. Um, there will be a Q&A time at the end of the session. However, you are always welcome to ask your question in the chat window anytime. And also don't forget to send your full name in English together with your email address in the chat window only one time, please, so that you can uh, we can publish your um, participation, uh, participating on certificate uh, certification um, accordingly. So, um, without further ado, I like to hand the uh, microphone over to uh, Mr. John. Um, please, the floor is yours. Good afternoon. Uh, good evening. Uh, to everyone, thank you for joining the session today. Um, as Sean mentioned, my name is John Shearer. I'm the Senior Development Manager for the Bampton World Federation. I've been working for the Bampton World Federation since 2014. Uh, so I have uh, seven years experience with the International Federation and prior to, to working for the Bampton World Federation, I worked for, for a national federation, the National Bampton Federation in Scotland. Um, so I do have a perspective of the, the international side of things, but also the, the national side, which is where I understand a number of, of you are uh, representing today. Uh, I'd just like to start by thanking the Asian Paralympic Committee for the opportunity and for putting on this initiative. I think um, given the current circumstances and, and difficult times that we're working in, um, initiatives like this that bring people together and allow us to share ideas and uh, experiences and information uh, can only be a good thing. So I'd just like to, to acknowledge and thank Asian Paralympic Committee for, for the initiative. Um, this is actually the first of two sessions that are related to para badminton. The first one being delivered by myself, which will look broadly at the role of the Badminton World Federation, um, some of our priority areas and some of our programs. And then we'll have a second session scheduled for either later this year or, or early into 2021, which will be delivered uh, to focus more on the tournament side of things. So the tournament structure within para badminton and also we'll touch on the, the classification system in a little bit more detail there as well. Um, I think 2020 has been a challenging year for, for all of us um, in sport and, and outside sport as well, but um, in terms of the, the impacts that COVID-19 has had on, on the BWF and our operations, clearly there's been a lot of um, disruption to international tournaments, both uh, in para badminton and in the able body side of the game. Um, development activities have also been postponed. Um, and um, obviously we were looking forward to making our debut in the Paralympic Games this year. Uh, unfortunately, we're going to have to wait a little bit longer, but I think the, the key thing through all of this is that the safety of the athletes, the coaches, the entourage um, really has been at the front of, of our minds as the International Federation. So um, while we're disappointed with a lot of the postponements, um, we do recognise that there's a need to, to consider the athlete's safety first. Um, we are at the moment already looking forward to 2021 and beginning our planning and preparation so that we can offer activities, uh, programs, and also tournaments for para badminton athletes um, and the community in 2021. Um, 
I would like the session today to be to be interactive. So if you do have questions, uh, please do feel free to ask. And I'll, I'll save some time for the end where we can take questions. And following the presentation, if anyone would like a copy um, of the presentation or if any further questions come to your mind, please do feel free to, to reach out and to contact me. Uh, I'll be happy to share my email address at the end of the presentation. So maybe just to start us off, um, let me just pull this down here. Uh, a little quiz, just to make sure everyone's awake and, and interactive today. Um, what I'd like you to do, the shuttle has been taken out of this image. Um, so there's different boxes that you can see on the screen here. And halfway through the session today, I'm gonna reveal the answer uh, as to where this, the, the shuttle should be. So I'd like you in the chat box, uh, through the chat function, if you don't mind, um, so that everything's above board. If you could tell us, uh, guess in the chat where you think the shuttle should be in the in the pictures here. Uh, there's boxes from A through to L. So I'm going to give you maybe 30 seconds to get your guesses into the chat box. Uh, starting now, thanks. see a few coming in already, which is great. So I'll give you maybe 20 more seconds to get these guesses in. Last 10 seconds. Let's see. A lot of people voting for B, it seems. B and G seem to be popular. Okay, we'll close that there. So um, as I said, during the, the presentation, we'll take a short um, one or two minute break just to, to refresh our minds and we'll, uh, we'll share the answers to this quiz at that point. So let me just pin this down here, thanks. Um, so the session today is gonna to cover a few different areas. Uh, I'm gonna start by touching a little bit on the who, who we are, who the Badminton World Federation are, a little bit about how Power Badminton is um, structured within the organization and some of our priority areas. I'm also then gonna talk about the, the different resources um, and educational materials that we've developed that are freely available to our national Badminton Federations and to national Paralympic committees. Um, and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of the programs and support that is available to you. So we have female participation grants, we have classifier workshops at national level. We partner very closely with the IPC and with the Ajitos Foundation to run a number of projects and activities. And I'm also gonna talk a little bit about the equipment support, support program that we offer and research that we're currently undertaking in Power Badminton. So that's the kind of agenda for the, the session today. For those that are maybe less aware of, of Power Badminton, just to give you a quick overview, um, when we talk about Power Badminton, obviously we're talking about athletes with a physical impairment. Uh, the Badminton World Federation do work with other organizations such as Special Olympics International. Um, but when we talk about Power Badminton as an organization, we're, we're talking about athletes with physical impairment. Um, within the sport, we have six sport classes. So we have two wheelchair sport classes, and then we have uh, three standing classes and a short stature class also. Um, like Badminton, we have men's and women's singles, men's and women's doubles and mixed doubles events. The scoring system is exactly the same as it is in Badminton. And largely speaking, the playing court uh, area is, is exactly the same. However, there are some modifications for some events, for example, in wheelchair one and two singles, and SL3 singles, there are some slight modifications to the court. In terms of our structure as an organization, uh, the Badminton World Federation are based in Asia. We're actually based in Malaysia, in Kuala Lumpur. Um, and we work with five continental confederations or five regional offices. As you can see on the screen there, we have Badminton Asia, who are also based in Kuala Lumpur. We have Badminton Oceania, who are based in Auckland, New Zealand. Badminton Africa, who are based in Mauritius, Badminton Europe, based in Denmark, and Badminton Pan America, who are based in Lima, Peru. So as the International Federation, our role really is to develop uh, the resources, the tools, 
um, to support our five continental confederations, also to support those five CCs with funding. Um, and in turn, that funding trickles down to our 194 national badminton federations. So within each of those five regions, we have a series of national national badminton federations, very similar to national Paralympic committees, um, and there are five continental offices support those national federations. As a federation, we have a number of strategic um, focus areas, um, just to highlight some of these on the screen. Events clearly are, are a massive um, priority area for, for the Badminton World Federation. It's where we uh, are able to touch a lot of athletes and have a lot of participation, but also it's where we are able to generate um, income and sponsorship, which we can then filter back into developing the sport uh, across the world. So events plays a big part in what, we're, what we deliver as an organization. We have obviously an Olympic sport, but we have world championships. We have uh, mixed team championships. Uh, and World Junior Championships, World Senior Championships, but other major events, as well as our World Tour, which have been delivered through the office here in KL. Um, we're obviously part of the Olympic and soon to be part of the Paralympic program, which we're very excited about. And that really has helped us to, to grow the game uh, globally and to increase our status of the sport globally as well. And the third box here, development and sport for all. This is the, the area that I work in. Um, and really, this is a, a really key area for the organization in terms of trying to grow the game globally. So as many of you will know, um, in Asia, badminton is a very popular and well-known sport, but in other regions of the world, badminton is maybe less known or less popular. So uh, a big part of the development sport for all department is to look at how we can grow the game globally how we can ensure that we've got good representation at all levels within the game and how we can create more opportunities for people to become involved in, in badminton and in para badminton. So that's not just players, but it could be coaches, it could be technical officials, it could be administrators and so on. And then along the bottom of the screen here, you can see some of the more functional areas of our office. So we have communications, marketing, general operations, governance, and finance. In terms of our talking more specifically now about para badminton and our priority areas with para badminton, we talk a lot about more and better. Um, and I think the better is quite an important, uh, an important one here. So yes, we want to increase numbers across all our programs and all our areas, but there's a real emphasis uh, on the quality of what we're doing and trying to enhance and improve the quality across all of these areas. So as well as increasing the number of players that we have, the number of coaches, classifiers, we want to ensure that those, those groups are well educated, they have good resources and they have good knowledge. Um, clearly events and tournaments is, is a big part of what we do. So we need to ensure that we have people with, with good knowledge to organize tournaments uh, and particularly parabanton tournaments, which are a little bit different from, from regular tournaments. Um, and in order to service those events, we need technical officials, we need classifiers, we need people across the board to, to service these events. So there is an emphasis within the organization and within our five CCs um, to grow things, uh, but also not to lose focus on the quality of what we're doing as well, and to ensure that we have good quality people across all levels. In terms of the structure of Para Badminton, um, the, the diagram you can see on the screen here breaks down a little bit um, of the structure. So um, we have uh, within Para Badminton specifically, we have a Para Badminton Athletes Commission, and that commission is uh, elected by the athlete community. So we have a commission um, of representatives who are elected by the Para Athlete Community, and that group is really to represent the views of the Para Athlete Community. Uh, to ensure that um, there's a voice for the athletes within the BWF structure. Sitting above the Athletes Commission, we have a Para Badminton Commission. And that, I guess you could say, is a more um, expert group or technical group who are involved in driving a lot of the um, technical aspects of the game. So within our commission, we have experts from the medical field. We have experts from the technical side of things, from development, from the event side. 
um, to really look at our strategies um, moving forward. The committee um, then make recommendations and proposals which go to the Parabamton Committee, which is made up of BWF Council members. And then finally, we have the BWF Council. So you can see that there's a kind of chain here um, of consultation and um, different levels um, and groups working to develop Parabamton globally. Um, and I think one of the key things just to mention again here is that across all levels, um, from the Athletes Commission right through to the BWF Council, we have representation um, of para-athletes in those various committees and commissions and on the BWF Council. Um, so we're well represented to ensure that we're, we're meeting the needs of the para-athlete community. In terms of the BWF office, um, we as an organization made a decision not to establish a separate department or, or team that focused on Parabamton. Um, our, our motto um, is one sport, one team. Um, so as an organization, we have integrated Parabamton into our various um, departments in the, in the office here in KL. So within the development department, we have people with a focus on, on Parabamton. The same goes for events and integrity and the communications department. So we feel as an organization, that's quite a strong message to send globally that we've fully integrated Parabamton uh, and inclusion into our existing structures. This is just to highlight a little bit about the, the national relationships now, um, because as a Paralympic sport now, um, who, who will debut in, in Tokyo and, and will be included in the Paris games also, um, really what we're trying to do is establish relationships at the national level as far as possible. So where there are national Paralympic committees and where we have national badminton federations or there may be a national parabadminton federation, we're trying to encourage and, and look at ways that we can bring these organizations together to, to join things up and to work to, uh, collectively and in partnership. So we do feel that where there's national Paralympic committees, national badminton federations, or Parabamton federations in a country that we can achieve more by working together than by working in isolation. I mentioned earlier our five continental confederations and for this region, obviously Badminton Asia is, is the main focus and main contact point for the BWF. Um, so they are the ones that are supporting our national Badminton federations with, um, with a variety of programs and packages. Um, so it's just to give you an overview of the support that the BWF provides to Badminton Asia, which is specifically to develop para badminton in the region. So we have two grants that we provide to Badminton Asia. The first one is related to participation. And this really is about trying to, to integrate para badminton into, um, into new countries, uh, maybe countries where badminton or para badminton is less well known. Um, so it's about trying to generate new participation programs. It's about trying to educate coaches, uh, classifiers, technical officials. So that's what this first grant is about. And the second grant is a player development grant. And that grant is about providing opportunities for talented athletes, uh, talented parabamton athletes to fulfill their potential, uh, particularly in countries that are um, developing that maybe have less resources uh, and less access to funding, uh, but have talented athletes. This is a, a grant that can be used by Badminton Asia to try and nurture and support that talent so that we can have a good representation at all levels uh, and across all countries at our major championships and at the international level. So that grant can be used for things like uh, player development camps, scholarships to allow athletes to participate in international tournaments, uh, and for some higher level mentoring and coach education also. Education and resources. So I'm going to talk briefly now about some of the different resources and programs that we have available to you to assist you in your development. First of all, just to look at the coaches side of things. Um, this is our coach education framework. Um, at the bottom of the screen here, you can see a program called Shuttle Time, which is our school's badminton program. 
Um, that program offers free access to resources uh, and lesson plans and video clips for teachers around the world. The resources are currently available in over 20 languages and the program is being implemented in more than 130 countries globally. Um, what's important to highlight with the Shuttle Time program is it's about introducing the sport to children from a young age, to giving them a taste of badminton. And the program is fully inclusive. So it can be used in, in, in schools um, where teachers may be working with, uh, with pupils with um, physical impairment or intellectual disabilities. Um, the activities are fully adaptable for a range of, of different disabilities. So that's our, our kind of grassroots level program. And then sitting above shuttle time, we have our coach education framework, level one, level two, and so on, um, which is where we, we have resources and courses and programs available to develop coaches globally. And you'll see on the left-hand side of the screen here, we have a box um, which says disability coaching workshop. So we uh, recently, I say recently, uh, over th three years ago now, uh, developed a specific workshop which focuses on coaches who may have an interest in coaching athletes with a disability. Um, and I'm going to talk just briefly now about how that workshop is actually being integrated into this framework. So you can see on the screen here with our coach level one program, there are a few different delivery models that we have. One is that existing coaches who've already gone through a level one course, um, who already have that qualification, but now have an interest in, in coaching athletes with a disability, they can actually attend a workshop which focuses purely on coaching athletes with a disability. So that can be delivered over two and a half, three days to a group of coaches. And it really focuses on uh, how to coach and how to, to work with athletes with a disability. Um, and the reason that course can be delivered over two or three days only is because the coaches attending already have the level one qualification. So they have the knowledge of coaching, they have the how to coach, the what to coach principles, um, and we can really focus on, on the aspects related to disability coaching. The other opportunity at the top here is that we can deliver a, a blended course, which is slightly extended, delivered over maybe seven or eight days, where coaches would go through the whole level one course and we would integrate disability coaching into that course. Um, so it's just to show that there's a few different delivery models and, and ways that we can educate coaches. If you're interested in picking up any of these resources, then you can visit the BWF development website. Um, through a very simple sign up process, you'll be able to access the coach education manuals. And within the coach level one manual, we have a, a dedicated chapter coaching athletes with a disability. So that's free to, to download through the Bampton World Federation development website. And also if you visit the, the BWF development YouTube channel, you can access a series of video clips for coaches, um, the shuttle time clips also. And there's also some specific clips on there related to uh, para badminton as well. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the female participation grants now. Uh, and some support that might be interesting uh, or an opportunity for, for some of our national Paralympic committees and member associations on the call today. So this is something that um, the Badminton World Federation identified um, three or four years ago that in terms of participation, um, we do have a higher number of male athletes than female athletes. Um, and, and to try and tackle that and to try and boost the number of female athletes, we introduced a female participation grant. So this grant offers scholarships to new female athletes um, and it gives them support with things like flights, accommodation and entry fees to attend their first international parabandon tournament where they would be classified internationally for the first time and they would then be able to compete on the international level. So um, it's a way for us to try and get female athletes, support female athletes, to get them into the system, to give them their first taste of international competition, to have them classified internationally um, so that they can start their, their competitive journey in the sport. So on the screen there, you can see the, some of the statistics and details for 2020. We received 70 applications from 36 countries. 
and in the end we awarded 51 scholarships you can see the breakdown across the different um, sport classes there um, and, and how those those 51 grants were awarded now clearly in 2020 um, we offered these scholarships with a full calendar of tournaments available and and unfortunately only two uh, international tournaments were delivered this year because of COVID-19. So the recipients from this year um, have not had the opportunity, many of the recipients have not had the opportunity to attend and to utilize those scholarships. So we've, um, we are allowing those grants to be carried forward into 2021 so that those female athletes don't miss out on the opportunity um, to, to attend their first tournament. In terms of 2021, this is something that we have budgeted for 2021. As I mentioned at the start of the, the session, we're already planning for next year and how we can um, offer opportunities for athletes to compete in a safe way. Um, and it's our intention to offer female participation grants in 2021 across all sport classes. So at the moment, um, we're in the process of defining um, the calendar of tournaments for 2021. And once we know the, the calendar of events, we'll be in a position to circulate an application process around the female participation grants for 2021. Those, uh, that information will be circulated to all of our Parabampton contacts. Um, so we have uh, contacts for uh, the national um, body responsible for Parabampton. So that could be the National Bampton Federation the National Parabampton Federation or the National Paralympic Committee. Um, if you want to check that list, then it's on the BWF corporate website, um, just to make sure that there is a contact from your country that will receive that information. Okay, so we're gonna go back to the quiz now. Um, and this was, the, this was the, the, the picture that we put up at the start of the session. Um, so I think everyone's had their guesses now. Uh, which is great, so I'm ready to reveal the answers. I can see some yellow lines on my screen. I'm not sure how those are there, but uh, but a lot of people, I think, guessed B. A lot of people were guessing G also, uh, but the answer is actually D. So you can see the shuttle here is up in box D. So we'll check the chat at the end of the call and see if anyone uh, guessed correctly with that. Okay, moving on to national classifier support and how we can support your organizations with national classifier education. So I'll maybe focus on the left-hand side of this, um, this diagram to begin with. Now, at the international level, um, we, we offer classification at most international Parabampton tournaments. Typically that would involve having two panels of classifiers to, to classify athletes at a tournament. And typically uh, we would have between 12 and 15 international Parabampton tournaments per year uh, currently. Um, so the need and demand for international classifiers is relatively limited. We have a team of about 22 international classifiers who service those international tournaments and um, deliver various workshops at those tournaments also. Um, but where we've really shifted our focus over the last uh, one to two years has been to look at ways to in increase and support classification at the national level, because we know this is where um, a number of countries are looking for support, particularly countries that have Parabampton athletes and are interested in running national competitions, national Parabampton championships, um, or even regional tournaments in, in their country. So the need to develop national classifiers um, has, has been highlighted to us. So we've introduced two levels of national classification, a national level one, which is open to anyone and everyone. So coaches, um, people with a medical background, uh, volunteers, technical officials, are welcome to attend the National Level 1 Classifier Workshop. Um, that's a two and a half day course um, or workshop that introduces some of the, the theoretical aspects of classification, introduces the, the sport classes, um, and also allows an opportunity for um, practical tasks and observations of athletes who are going through the classification process. 
Um, this is a non-assessed course, so it's, it's an attendance-based course. It's a chance for us to share information with the community. Uh, we then have a national level two um, classifier workshop, and that workshop is open to individuals who've done the national level one and who also have the adequate medical professional background. Um, so, so that's people who have a higher level of knowledge. And on those courses, again, over two and a half days, we're able to go into more detail and more depth on the, uh, the minimal impairment criteria, the classification system. Um, and as I said before, there's a variety of tasks and op opportunities for observation on those national level two workshops. Um, so this is something that we, we typically deliver at international tournaments because there's good opportunities for observation uh, and to see athletes um, being classified and also competing on the court as well. Um, and this is something that for your, your own national federations, if you are interested in developing um, athletes and offering national tournaments and national championships, then this may be an area that you, you're interested in, in developing. Um, so typically across the year, we'll, we'll offer several workshops, which member associations and MPCs can, can apply to, ascend, uh, to send a candidate to attend. Um, there's no costs to attend the, the course itself. Uh, participants just need to cover their, their transport and accommodation, but there's no fee or cost to actually attend those workshops. Um, and, and we would ask you to start to think now about, you know, people um, with a medical background who maybe also have uh, experience in badminton that could be trained through that national level one and national level two pathway. Um, when it comes to developing the international pathway, we use the pool of national level two classifiers um, as, as the basis to then invite people up to the international level when space becomes available. So if that's interesting, um, then, then please let us know if you have candidates interested in that. Typically, again, once we have the calendar for 2021 confirmed, we'll circulate uh, uh, an activity calendar for these workshops and an application process also. So you can see on the screen here, this is some of the content that we're covering on these workshops. It's about the, the theory of classification. It's about the minimal impairment criteria and how it's applied to player evaluation. And it's also a good opportunity to evaluate the players um, under the supervision of international classifiers. I'm going to talk now a little bit about the relationship and the partnership we have with the GTOS Foundation and the International Paralympic Committee and some of the programs that we've delivered collaboratively with those organizations. So first of all, as a sport, I think we've been, uh, we've been very lucky. Uh, Badminton has been very lucky uh, and we've developed a really strong relationship with the IPC and the GTOS Foundation and we're involved in a number of different programs that those organizations are, are offering. Uh, the first one being the Impossible program, which we've used the Shuttle Time program as the, the tool or resources to, to become involved in the Impossible program. Um, we've translated those resources into a variety of languages, which are freely available through the AGITAS portal. The second area is the Proud Paralympian Athlete Education program, where Badminton have got three ambassadors who are trained as proud Paralympian educators. So Risha, Raul and Rachel are our three ambassadors who are delivering athlete education. And again, typically uh, in a calendar year, we would offer three to four opportunities at international tournaments for athletes to, to compete. Also athlete education. The next area that we've collaborated is on the GTOS grant support program um, and we've delivered projects with the GTOS in Pan America and in Africa since 2017. Typically when we deliver development projects with the GTOS we really focus on education so it's about trying to give opportunities for players to get good quality coaching uh, particularly new players but also to offer some coach education um, classifier education and also administrators as well. So uh, our, our philosophy as an organization is very much about building a local national workforce of, exports, uh, of experts. It's not about the BWF sending 
experts into the countries all the time, but it's about how we can develop the people locally uh, because we feel that's a more sustainable method of developing the sport. And then the second uh, area down the bottom here is the sport technical workshops. And that is an area that um, in the Asian region, we've had a lot of success and we've offered a lot of support and activities to countries in the Asian region. So we've delivered projects in India, in UAE, and also in Japan more recently. And again, these activities focused on developing players, coaches, classifiers, and administrators. So just a few photos here. Um, from first of all, the workshop in India in 2018, which included uh, representatives from India, from Nepal, and from Sri Lanka. We then delivered an activity in 2019 in um, Sharjah in United Arab Emirates, um, just prior to the IWAS World Games. And that activity was attended by uh, national badminton federations and MPCs from Afghanistan, Syria, Iraq, Lebanon, Kuwait, Yemen, and Pakistan, as well as UAE. And then in 2020, just, just before COVID-19 hit and, and there was a, a number of national lockdowns, we were part of the Road to Tokyo program in Nagoya, Japan, um, with activities being delivered to participants from Japan, India, Malaysia, Tajikistan, Philippines, Vietnam, Hong Kong, and Taipei. Um, so as you can see, a lot of the projects and activities that we are delivering are focusing around um, not just one group, not just athletes, but athletes, coaches, administrators, classifiers. We're trying to maximize what we do with any activity at any one time. Activity, uh, further activity support um, and equipment support. Um, we recognized a few years ago that in uh, a number of athletes, Parabampton players um, were using um, wheelchairs from other sports to participate in, in Parabampton. So we had athletes that were using basketball chairs, tennis chairs, which in, in many ways are, are, are fine. Uh, but in terms of the movement involved in badminton, we recognized that uh, those chairs um, were maybe not quite as suitable as we would have liked for, for uh, to develop athletes. So we worked with a company in the UK called RMA Sport to develop a, a Parabampton wheelchair um, that we could support member associations and NPCs with um, to help new athletes to develop. So uh, if you think about the scale, we have some um, really world-class and high-class um, Parabampton wheelchairs out there. Um, the idea behind this particular wheelchair is to develop something that is durable, uh, sustainable, and affordable for our member associations. So in 2019, we ran a pilot project to, to test those chairs and to put those into some countries in the African region. And then based on that, uh, the success of that pilot, we further invested with the Agitos Foundation in supplying wheelchairs to a number of other countries. Um, so this year, we'll be supplying 60 wheelchairs um, to a number of different countries. Um, typically, those are countries that have been involved in projects um, that we've delivered previously. We want to see that there's a need um, and, and, and the, the wheelchairs and equipment will be used. Um, and as we move forward, this is something we'll, we'll continue to do where we deliver activities and programs. We'll follow that up with support for um, for equipment. Um, and then the bottom bullet point there is that if national Paralympic committees or national badminton federations um, also identify an additional need for wheelchairs, um, then there are opportunities for you to, to order and purchase these wheelchairs yourself um, and, and to coordinate that with uh, RMA Sport. So we're happy to pass on those contacts if you would like them. And then the final point is just to, just to say that um, as a, as a sport, Parabampton is, is quite a young sport. Um, we will feature for the first time in the Paralympic Games um, next year. Um, so we, we are undertaking um, a considerable amount of research um, in different aspects of the sport to ensure that we're, we're moving forwards as a sport. Um, so I just want to share with you a couple of examples of research projects that we're currently undertaking 
Um, these have been impacted by COVID-19 and were meant to be delivered and concluded this year, but we will instead uh, move these forward into 2021. But the first project is with Massey University in New Zealand. And that research project is about um, looking at um, physical testing for wheelchair athletes um, and how coaches can develop, how we can design uh, physical testing to measure um, and predict VO2 peak in wheelchair players. So that's um, an ongoing um, research with Massey University in New Zealand. And the second one is with the University of Malaya. Um, and this research project is looking at the psychosocial fact factors um, linked to athlete well-being um, and how coaches um, and entourage can use this information to ensure that we're providing the best quality um, service and experiences for our athlete community. Um, so the BWF do offer research grants. So if you're linked to any um, universities or research institutions in your country that are interested in delivering uh, badminton related research or para badminton related research, then please do reach out to us because we offer annual grants um, to support research in this space. Another research project that we have going at the moment is looking at injury prevention and, and patterns around injuries uh, of our parabamton athlete community so that we can ensure that we, we have good data on, on injuries and we can then look at measures uh, to prevent injuries within the athlete community. So that is the end of the presentation. As I said, this is quite a, a high level presentation. It's, it's really the focus is to give you a, an overview of, of who we are, some of the priority areas. Uh, hopefully you can see that we're not just focused on the elite side of, of the sport, but we're also very much interested in developing the sport across all levels um, through a variety of programs. And, and you can see my emails on the screen there. If, if you have questions, um, if you're interested in more information on any of these topics, um, then please do feel free to reach out. Um, we always, offer that not many people then follow up with contact so if you do have questions please don't be shy to reach out to us we want to support you we we want to support our national federations the npcs um either directly through bwf or through our our continental confederation badminton asia so uh sean i'll maybe pass it back to you and and you can facilitate the the q a thank you yeah Thank you. Um, thank you very much, um, John, for the uh, wonderful um, presentation and sharing the useful information. I guess it was a great opportunity to know what BWF offers and where the um, resources and activities are can, uh, can be found in terms of um, developing para badminton um, in your countries. So uh, before uh, we move on to the um, Q&A session, I like to um, well remind that um, there was a quiz from Mr. John, and I can tell you that no one uh, has told that the correct answer. So, <laughs> okay, so no, I... no one ever told um, that was um, answer was um, D. Everyone just um, went for B e and uh, G, I guess majority. Okay, okay. Okay, so when, when my colleague uh, Shami will deliver the next session, we'll need to give a, a slightly easier uh, quiz then. <laughs> okay, uh, what was the um, like um, prize for winner for the quiz that gives them like a motivation to get involved actively? Actively. Oh, uh, we'll, we'll need session. to think about that. We'll, we'll need to think about that. Maybe we have some equipment that we can offer uh, for the next uh, time. If someone gets it right, then the, the problem is usually many people get the right answer. Uh, <laughs> so um, we need to be careful. But yeah, we, we can look at a prize, I think, for the next session. Okay. Um, well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, now the floor is yours for um, any question for Mr. John. But I just uh, received the um, question from Mr. Sukant um, regarding um, any tentative um, the international, any tentative on dates of international um, tournament. I guess he's uh, 
uh, wondering where he uh, like to know um, any um, scheduled international to tournament for the next year? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I can give a kind of a broad answer for this one. As I said before, this I, I work in the development area. So we have a, a colleague who's more focused on the para events side of things. But um, what I can say is that we're currently looking at, um, as a priority, we had one of our qualification tournaments um, for Tokyo 2020 uh, Paralympic Games that was postponed earlier this year. So our priority in 2021 is to ensure that we deliver that that qualification tournament to give athletes the the final opportunity to 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 participate to to give themselves their best chance to qualify for the games, um, and then beyond that, we'll be looking at how we can offer additional international tournaments uh, before Tokyo, and then also moving forward, we have uh, just recently announced just yesterday we announced that um, Japan will host the 2021 Parabantam World Championships. Um, which will be in the fourth quarter of 2021. Um, so the, at the moment, the calendar is being shaped. We're talking to hosts. Um, and we're, as I said before, we're looking at how we can offer um, safe, a safe return to international para badminton for the athlete community. Um, so we don't want to rush in too quickly, but we're, we're making those plans as we speak. All right. Um, there is um, another uh, question from Ileshi from India. When um, will the Asian Para Badminton Championship happen? Uh, is that the Continental Championships or is that the... Uh, you can uh, get involved in this... Um, um, continental, I think I can yeah, see someone. I, I guess. Yeah, it's Continental Championship, you said. Should yeah, so, so we're in discussions with, the, with Badminton Asia and the other Continental Confederations at the moment about the the Continental Parabampton Championships, which were also meant to be um, this year, but were um, unfortunately postponed. So we're looking at, again, at alternatives around those championships and when they can fit into the calendar, potentially for, for 2021. Here is a question that, is there a um, AG remit um, for, to the participant? No. We don't have any age restrictions for, for participants for the female participation grant, no. Okay. Um, another question from MPC Indonesia. When will BWF release the um, schedule for tournament for the um, next year before Paralympic Games? Uh, I, I can't give you an exact date for that, unfortunately. I wish I could give you an exact date of when we'll be publishing a calendar. All I can tell you at the moment is that our, our events team are, are in daily communication with hosts. We did receive um, bids for, um, to host international tournaments in 2021. Uh, and currently we're in discussion with the hosts um, on, on where and when those activities and, and tournaments will take place. So as soon as we have a, a calendar um, ready to be published, the first thing that we'll be doing is sharing that with the, with, uh, the community. We recognize that, um, you know, the NPCs, the Bampton Federations and the players uh, want to start planning for 2021. Uh, but what we want to make sure is that we don't um, circulate something now, which which then changes. And um, so we want to make sure that when we have some some firm information on when and where tournaments will take place in 2021, we'll share that with the with the community. Yeah, thank you. And questions? Well, it's not a question, but uh, from MPC Yemen, they just uh, established a badminton federation in partnership with the um, Yemen Olympic Committee in Yemen. Um, they play the game, but there is no equipment. So I guess um, they are looking for any opportunity to um, any support um, in terms of um, equipment from, I guess, BWF. Yep. Yeah, no, I've, I've been part of those those discussions uh, around the, the formation of a new badminton federation in, in Yemen, and we're really pleased to, to potentially have a new member coming out of, of Yemen, so that's fantastic. Um, and we recognize that equipment will play a, a key role in, in supporting that federation, so it's very much in our plans to be able to offer some support 
uh, to the NPC there because they have been involved in, as I mentioned before, the project in, in UAE. Uh, we did have athletes involved in that, in that project. Okay, um, the question from Timor Les. Um, could you please provide your the, um, best suggestion for the para badminton development? Should uh, para badminton under national federation or um, national Paralympic committee? Um, I mean, I think from our side, there's no um, there's no right or wrong. It, it, it depends often on the country and the um, the political and governance structure within the country. In some countries, it's it's the National Paralympic Committee that uh, oversee and manage the the sports um, with a variety of committees. And in other countries, it's it's, it's passed down or. or, or the National Badminton Federation is responsible. So we've got examples globally of both and it, where it works well in both. Um, I think the key thing, as I mentioned before, is just to try and work together and to have good communication between the organizations. Um, we will, as the, as the International Federation, we will officially recognize one as the, as the official uh, organization nationally that are driving para badminton, that are entering athletes into tournaments etc. Uh, but we'll always communicate information to both um, MPCs and National Badminton Federations. So uh, what we've seen in some countries that is working very well is that, um, you know, where there's a power badminton um, committee established or, or a group that are looking to develop the sport, there's representatives from the NPC, from the National Badminton Federation, you know, from different key stakeholders all sitting around the same table discussing how they can maximize um, and develop the sport nationally. So there's no, I don't think there's a right or wrong, but the key thing is to, to try and collaborate as much as possible. Um, and obviously we're happy to kind of support that collaboration if, if required. Yeah, thank you. Um, well, um, question from Berkeley, uh, India. Any para badminton coach education program in 2021 year? Well, I, I guess uh, I saw that there is um, the online coaching education program already uh, in place and available for now and uh, I guess uh, for next year. But I'm not sure uh, does this mean, mean, I mean, the offline um, education program or online um, education program, but um, yeah, yeah, we have we have the the resources that are available online. But in terms of the actual um, attending courses, we do hope to be able to kickstart and and deliver face to face courses again in 2021. I think I think in the first quarter of 2021 is probably not particularly realistic. Um, so probably we're looking at towards the, the second half of the year um, through our CCs to start to offer more face-to-face -face opportunities uh, and coach education opportunities. Um, the other thing that we are looking at is um, opportunities at the Power Badminton World Championships in 2021 and how we can offer some sort of coaches uh, workshop or forum um, where coaches, we, you know, we have a, a pool of coaches that are coming together for those championships and how we can offer some sort of conference or, or workshop for those coaches. Okay. Um, the question from Cambodia, MPC Cambodia. Um, Cambodia will host the um, 12 uh, Asian Para Games in 2023. How could we work with you on technical and other shoot support? Yeah, um, if you if you take down my email address and, and want to shoot me an email, then I can put you in contact with our events team. We'll then be able to, to, to have those discussions with you and to share more information with you. Um, so please do drop me an email and I'm happy to make that introduction and, and you can start to talk about support in that area. I think maybe just to highlight for, for those that are on the call, when we talk about technical officials for, for Para Badminton, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of the rules and regulations are very similar to, to badminton. So if you have national umpires, if you have national referees, um, they already have, I would say, you know, 90, 95% of the knowledge needed to also be involved in a para badminton environment. So it's just about how we can give that specific information that relates to para badminton, but 
but don't forget your existing volunteers, your existing workforces, because they can also function in service in Parabanton tournaments and events as well. Right. Uh, moving on to the um, next question from Balayazi. Is there any certification programs for para badminton players to uplift their career as para badminton coaches? Um, as coach, well, maybe there's, there's two areas here. There's the, there's the athlete education area, which I mentioned earlier. We, we offer athlete education through the Proud Paralympian program. Um, which is looking at how athletes can consider kind of that, that dual career of being a, an athlete, but also having other opportunities. In terms of players who are interested in becoming coaches or receiving coach education, there's no um, restrictions on on players attending those courses or on players um, downloading and, and accessing those materials online. So if you're a player, and you would also like to, to have more knowledge on coaching, please visit the, the BWF development website. Please download the materials, view the videos, um, and let your National Badminton Federation know that you're interested in attending a, a coach education course when, when it's available. Okay. Um, well, from Prun Sabar Ruth. The question is for wheelchair can be used by badminton. I mean, wheelchair specifically, or it can be accessible with other wheelchair sports. And regarding the BWF support programs, shall support equipment for Cambodia? If so, how um, the um, how to get grant for um, para badminton player for Cambodia? Yeah. Um, I, I think we've seen quite a lot through through Badminton Asia and on social media, I've seen quite a lot of activity in Cambodia over the last two to three months. So there seems to be a lot of para Badminton activity happening, which is which is fantastic. And Cambodia are actually on the list um, of countries identified to receive uh, a Badminton wheelchair um, this year. Um, so we're actually discussing with Badminton Asia how logistically how we're going to manage that and, and make sure the wheelchair gets to the right the right people. Um, so there is some support coming. Um, in terms of using other wheelchairs, I mean, as I said before, um, basketball chairs, tennis chairs are are perfectly suitable for for para badminton athletes. Maybe just need to be careful um, when moving backwards to make sure they don't tip uh, because. The, the, the back supporting wheel for, for basketball and tennis tends to be a little bit further forward than it is for badminton. So there is that danger that athletes can tip out the chair backwards. Um, so just be aware of that. But, um, but generally speaking, those chairs can be used. Thank you. Um, well, I guess uh, people uh, very like um, John's because we got a lot of um, we, I'm, I'm actually, I'm receiving a lot of questions from floors. So the next question is the, um, from Hussein. The National Federation of Able-Bodied don't understand disability. They give preference to able-bodied athletes. So the para badminton should be governed by um, Disability Federation only. Yeah, I mean, I mean, maybe just the first thing to highlight when I mentioned earlier, we have 194 national Badminton federations and the vast majority of those national federations are are led by volunteers. Um, so they're not necessarily fully functional operational um, organizations with full time paid staff, um, which means, of course, there are certain limitations in terms of, you know, time and, and, and what those federations can achieve. Um, so while they may have a real desire to 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 be involved in Parabanton, they may not have the capacity to, to, to fully organize and, and implement Parabanton activities. So that's where I think I said before, it's about you know sharing a little bit of the workload and kind of the key stakeholders coming together to see what is the best approach and the best fit for, for your country. Uh, but the key thing is to, to kind of start and, and, and get the key people around the table to then discuss you know how you can work together with that. Um, as I said before, we have good examples on both sides where it's the NPC and good examples where it's the Badminton Federation. Um, but we, we want to encourage that collaboration. 
So um, another question from Lamella, Philippine. Hi, John, if I'm not mistaken, I remember that you gave an equipment for the athlete, especially playing wheelchair worldwide yearly, I guess. Hope we can have at least one in my country, Philippines, during Ajito's last 2020 in Nagoya, Japan. Yep. We've, um, so the wheelchair support for this year, I mentioned that we've got 60 wheelchairs that are going out this year. We have put into the budget for 2021 further support for, for wheelchairs, for, for Bampton wheelchairs. And the way that we're distributing those wheelchairs is first and foremost, all the countries that have been involved in projects we've delivered with the GTOS will, will be in the first wave, if you like, because they've got people coaches that have been trained or players or classifiers, so they have a higher um, need to get started with that equipment. And then moving forward for any new countries that, that come on board and attend activities, we'll then support them. So Philippines were part of the activity in Nagoya and, and they will be on the list to receive um, support. Well, I think uh, this is gonna be um, the last question for um, today's session for John. Um, what is the um, easiest former uh, procedure to get registered a para athletes in BWF from Ahmed Mohammed? This is to enter athletes into the tournaments, or um, I guess it is, or is yeah, it about? Uh, yeah, he said yes. Yes. So, I said, again, I'll maybe put you in contact with our with our events team if you want to drop me an email because they can explain the process of how. Um, we recognize one, one organization in each country that enters the athletes and the system around doing that because we're moving towards a, an online entry system like we have for badminton. Um, so he'll be able to explain that process to you. Um, but if you could drop me an email with your contact details and which country you're an organization you're representing, then I can... I can pass that on to our events team, Shami, who's actually all, he's, he's in the call also today, observing. Yeah, this is a really uh, last, last question from Norvu. Should we propose or is the BWF going to provide the wheelchair? Uh, Bhutan are also on the list, so no need to make proposal uh, because uh, Bhutan are already on our list uh, because they were involved in a, in a project last year. The message from um, our APC CEO, Mr. Tarek Suwei, um, on behalf of APC board and management team, I'd like to thank John for his time and effort in delivering the webinar of today. And my apology for not being able to join you today due to another commitment. Thank you. All right, I guess uh, this is a uh, all for today's session and if you have any further question uh, you got already um, the John's email so anytime you can send the email and or you can um, contact me then I'll make sure that you will get the answer from BWF okay so thank you uh, again John and BWF okay for um, continuous support for our reason and really um, look forward to working together for coming games in 2021 use uh, para games and in 2022 Asian para games and more. So um, this concludes today's session with John and hope you, hope everyone enjoyed uh, today's session. Uh, well, uh, before we close uh, the session, if uh, John has, has anything to say or add to um, before we close this session. Yep, thanks, Sean. I've just put my email address in the chat as well, so please do feel free to drop me an email um, with your contact or, or questions. Uh, and maybe just to, to thank once again Asian Paralympic Committee for, for the opportunity. We're always very happy to to present um, to, to the members and to the, the National Paralympic Committees and to share ideas. So, so thanks for the opportunity. Thank you for putting this together during these, during these difficult times. And thank you to the participants for joining. Um, I can see that um, 
the region is very active. The Paralympic committees are very active. The national committees, the our national badminton federations are becoming more active as well. So um, we want to help you grow. Um, so if you do have questions or need support, please do reach out to us. And thank you again for your time. Okay. All right, everyone, uh, please take care uh, take care of yourself and have a good rest of the day and see you soon. Oh, bye-bye.